Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with another video. This time it is all uh, on non-communicable diseases, quite a short topic. Hopefully you enjoy the video. A non-communicable disease is a disease that is not transmitted uh, from a person. It is either contracted uh, through a person's lifetime or someone is born gen with a genetic disease. Non-communicable diseases account for 71% of all deaths worldwide. And this figure is a lot larger than the amount of deaths from communicable diseases. Some examples of communicable diseases are Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, any lung disease, lung disease, stroke, kidney failure. The leading cause of death from non-communicable diseases is cardiovascular diseases, which account for 21% of all uh, deaths by non-communicable diseases. There is also, uh, there is also a link from non-communicable diseases uh, to low-income uh, countries uh, with 46% of all non-communicable disease deaths occurring uh, in countries with uh, low income. Um, now, we, we'll talk about this when we look at risk factors of non-communicable diseases uh, and also it can be down to the fact that the countries don't have the medical capacities in order to fight these diseases. There are many risk factors that can affect your chance of contracting a non-communicable disease from your genetics uh, which obviously you can't control, to your lifestyle choices. One lifestyle choice is smoking. And smoking can significantly increase your chance of getting some non-communicable diseases. One example of a non-communicable disease that it can increase the chance of you contracting is lung cancer. That is because of the fact that uh, cigarettes contain a substance called tar, okay? And tar is a carcinogenic substance. This means tar is a carcinogenic substance. This means that it can increase the chance of your cells mutating. And that's why lots of smokers end up getting cancers. And the cancers can vary from mouth cancer to uh, all lung cancer, or even you can get some types of throat cancers because of the fact your smoke is going through your throat as well. Another disease that smokers often contract uh, is cardiovascular diseases and the reason why you, you're likely to get cardiovascular disease if you smoke is because of the fact uh, that cigarettes deposit fatty uh, substances uh, into your arteries and this can cause your arteries uh, to uh, clot and blood to not be able to flow and obviously this can, this can have massive effects on your heart. In addition to this, uh, smokers often co uh, have respiratory problems, meaning they struggle to breathe. That's because of the fact cigarette smoke uh, contains a substance called carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide uh, gets carried around by the blood. And in the end, your blood uh, carries around 10% uh, of carbon monoxide instead of uh, oxygen. This is why uh, smokers often have shortness of breath and a cough and the cough can cause many, many problems for the lungs and it can actually cause uh, some, some uh, lung failure because of the fact that you're coughing so often. The last one that I want to talk to you uh, for smoking is about smoking whilst pregnant. Uh, if you smoke whilst you're pregnant, uh, you can uh, leave your baby with many non-communicable diseases. Uh, in fact, your baby can actually be born dead and that's, this is called cot death. Uh, but often if a baby is born uh, and the mother has smoked during her pregnancy, uh, often they have a lot of respiratory problems, uh, which are breathing problems. Being obese can also affect your chance of contracting a non-communicable disease. An example of a non-communicable disease you can contract through uh, being obese is diabetes, and in specific, uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, this is because your body can no longer create enough insulin in order to lower your blood sugar because you kind of wear it out. The more you eat, the more your body has to produce insulin and it can kind of get worn out doing this. Another uh, communicable disease you can get from being obese uh, is cardiovascular disease. And just like with smoking, uh, fat can build up in your arteries 
and therefore you cannot get enough blood uh, to the heart and it can be incredibly bad. It can actually cause you a heart attack uh, and that, that's obviously a, a leading cause of death. Now exercising is a great way to lower your chance of getting a, a non-communicable disease. So there is ways that you can swing this uh, in order to lower your chance of getting a non-communicable disease as well. Last risk, fa risk factor we're going to look at uh, that can increase your chance of contracting a non-communicable disease is alcohol consumption. Now alcohol is incredibly bad for your organ, your liver. Uh, and if you have a liver that's not working at full capacity, that can cause many, many problems. Because obviously your liver plays such a large part in your digestive system that your uh, body can no longer break down food in a specific way. Actually, liver damage can cause uh, real large uh, weight loss, um, which is uncontrollable and your body uh, can actually go into being anorexic. Long term uh, misuse of alcohol can actually uh, result in many different non-communicable diseases such as uh, increased chance of stroke, uh, mouth cancer, bowel cancer, uh, and many more actually, uh, different non-communicable diseases. It's, people don't really think about all of the non-communicable diseases associated. And I think people uh, don't consider the risks of alcohol because of the fact it's a widely consumed drug and it is a recreational uh, legal drug. Scientists often observe that lifestyle factors can significantly increase your chance of contracting a non-communicable disease. However, a correlation between something does not mean uh, that, that that is the direct cause of the problem. It is incredibly useful to, for scientists to find these uh, correlations. However, they need to then prove that there's a casual mechanism between the two, uh, two variables. Uh, this is an example of a casual me mechanism, which is the percentage of people who smoke and the percentage of people uh, who die uh, as a result of lung cancer. So this is taken uh, from different countries around the world and showing that if people uh, smoke more, then they are more likely to die of lung cancer. And there's a correlation. You can see there's a positive correlation in that graph. Now, a casual mechanism is when uh, a scientist can explain a correlation and there is an explanation to the fact that uh, people who smoke often die uh, more from lung cancer and that's because of the fact we've observed, scientists have observed that tar in smoke is carcinogenic and if it's on people's lungs that it's likely to cause cancers. So this is a casual mechanism. Now, if you look at this graph, there is also a couple of outliers in here, okay? And I've put them in in purpose. The reason why there are outliers is because smoking is not the only factor that can increase the chance of getting lung cancer. So a scientist would have to explain their findings. And there must be other uh, things that are, are contributing to the chances of people contracting lung cancer. And we know that there are, okay, the exposure to radiation in that country, uh, also the air quality. Imagine if you are living right by power stations, uh, you're going to breathe in a lot of carbon, which is also carcinogenic carbon particulates. Also, this graph uh, doesn't tell you about the amount of medical uh, equipment that each country has. For example, uh, one country might be really good at uh, treating patients that have lung cancer and others might not be. So this can also affect uh, the shape of this graph. Cancer is a disease that affects so many families uh, now all around the world. Tumours can form and you get an abnormal division of the cells. There are two types of tumour. You have benign tumours and you have malignant tumours. Now, benign tumours are often easier to treat because of the fact they are often confined to one place. They don't move. And this means that often they can just be simply removed uh, either surgery or chopping off that infected area. Malignant tumours, however, can move. 
Uh, this is because of the fact they can infect the bloodstream and travel. This means that they can infect multiple organs. The specific type of uh, malignant tumour is a melanoma and um, these actually account for 2,000 deaths in the UK each year. Uh, and they're quite easily to be avoided. Uh, they're usually caused by exposure to UV radiation, uh, basically staying in the sun too long and making sure that you wear sunscreen when you go outside. That's why it's so, so important that you do wear sunscreen. There are two main treatments of cancer. Radiotherapy, where you fire high energy radiation at the infected area and also uh, chemotherapy which involves a series of drugs it also has a few side effects such as hair loss uh, and chemotherapy is often quite a long process however scientists are working really really hard to improve the process of chemotherapy making drugs that are specific to a certain area this is the end of the topic on non-communicable diseases uh, please remember to like the video if you like the content and subscribe to my channel at Your Science Teacher.